guests. I'm one of the co-founders with Real Estate Wealth Coaching. Uh, my partner, Jack Simon, is also on the call tonight. Um, we're going to kind of get through this. So um, if anybody is not following us, uh, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and especially Meetup because this is we're posting great videos. We're posting uh, upcoming meetups and networking events. So it's just a great way for you to stay connected with us on what's going on. We put out a lot of great content. Uh, also make sure to follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel, go to YouTube and search for real estate wealth coaching. Uh, we put a ton of great, uh, inter- we have a, a library of interviews, uh, with, uh, lots of experts, even new people. We do, uh, lots of great coaching tips and strategies, show rehabs, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you're following us on YouTube as well. Uh, our sponsor tonight for tonight's meetup is Avalon Capital. And Avalon Capital is a private lending firm located here in the uh, Memphis market. They're currently doing loans right now in the greater Memphis area, North Mississippi, and parts of uh, Arkansas. So uh, here are the basic terms that they, they provide. But the great thing about Avalon Capital is they are an asset-based lending company. So it's not based on your credit. So if you find a smoke and deal, there's a probability that the loan that you could get from them would cover 100% of your purchase and rehab. Sometimes you got to bring a little money to the table, but uh, it's very easy to qualify. A lot of people that the loans are made to are, are wholesalers looking to do flips uh, there are the occasional investors who are doing the burr strategy so that they can purchase with the private money and refinance out with a takeout lender. So uh, Avalon Capital, if you want to follow Avalon, go to facebook.com and look for Avalon Capital LLC. Uh, and if you are ever in need of private lending, you can you can contact them through there or you can go to realestatewealthcoaching.com backslash private lending. And there's a very basic loan application to fill out just so it, all it is is really just to collect some information for the private lender but avalon capital are is our sponsor for tonight's meetup all right if anybody is in the local memphis area i am looking to buy houses uh, we pay cash we close fast there's a list of a lot of the zip codes that we're buying property in uh, we're also in North Mississippi, Horn Lake, South Haven, Olive Branch. We're really looking for three bedroom, one bathrooms or better. There's my contact information. So if you get anything, please let me know. I'd love to take a look at any deals that you guys have. Now, <clears throat> next month's meetup, uh, we're bringing in a local investor named Dennis McDaniel with, um, hometown investment group. And we're going to talk to Dennis. Uh, He's just got a lot of great things going on. Dennis does a combination of wholesaling, doing some flips, uh, even uh, works with a lot of local investors. Uh, He's just got a lot of great things going on. His wife is a licensed local agent as well. So we'll kind of get his perspective on how they compare and contrast with, with uh, different businesses and also how they work together as well. So uh, Dennis is going to be, our guest for November and we already have the meetup details on our meetup page. So you can actually RSVP it for it tonight right now, if you would like. So maybe wait till the meeting's over tonight, but uh, make sure this is one you're not going to want to miss because this, this November uh, meetup is going to be our last one for the year. We're not doing a meetup uh, towards the end of December because really it's Christmas and new Year's. So uh, make sure you RSVP for this. So tonight's meetup though, we actually have, Amy Ransdahl, who is located out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. Amy, are you there? I'm here, and I'm going to hope that this is going to last for our signal. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, worst-case scenario, your signal drops. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll freestyle it until you're able to get on. How's that? That's perfect. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to give a wing it intro. So, Amy is located out of the Atlanta market. She is the owner and head broker for Powerhouse Real Estate. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. You are the CMO of Riva Global Virtual Assistance, which I'm going to assume that is a virtual assisting uh, organization geared for real estate. Is that correct? It is primarily yes. Awesome. And you're also a coach. Yes. Now, what do you coach? I've been a real estate coach, a uh, strategic coach, coach, and a corporate coach for 18 years. Um, I came out of the corporate world in performance and development, 
and went uh, straight into real estate investing and of course the realtor, the, the retail side of things. Um, I'm also an NLP master practitioner and I utilize, utilize a lot of that to help people with um, performance or uh, peak performance type coaching so that they have the mindset and the strengths to go after what they want to go after um, regardless of the tactical, right? So there's a difference. There's, you know, tactical and continuity style coaching. And then there's coaching that's purely mindset breakthrough level. And we do a lot of that in our office on all ends. That's awesome. And lastly, one of the things that I found out about you was you were a former inner circle advisor with fortune builders with which I'm going to assume if it's the same fortune builders, it was the fan Merrill organization, correct? Um, yes, I am one of the true OGs with them. So I go all the way back to when they were, they literally had just started, um, the very first five coaches and curriculum creators, uh, that they brought on to build that program. I was one of those five. So, um, I go way, way back. Um, um, yes, very familiar with the program all the way nuts and bolts and still very connected truly to a lot of the family. We, we could do a seminar on that alone. Oh, oh my gosh. Could we? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Also, I have some of the best stories that it came out of all those years. Um, and I'm very blessed that at Powerhouse, many of our members are alumni of that program and many of their uh, front end speakers and some of their immersion speakers and some of their, some of their um, kind of um, some of the leaders or that became leaders in the program are in our office, which is really cool. That's super cool. Well, Amy, I've got kind of a list of questions. We're going to kind of go down the row and uh, what I, for everybody who's on, on the meetup tonight, if you want to save your question, you can either type your question into the chat box and I will do my best to try to bring them up as we go, or you can wait till the end. We'll have a, a, a brief uh, question and answer session if anybody's got any questions for Amy. So tell us about you a little bit before real estate, because everybody, you know, someone would meet you now. Like when I met you, obviously I know you as someone who's in real estate, but what about you before real estate? Oh goodness. Okay. Well, I'm that really weird bag of mixed things um, that all kind of actually come together in as one. Um, I was a, um, I, I love to share the story because it tells people a lot about me. I was a biochemistry major um, who ended up with an art degree and then went into, yes, and then I went into corporate uh, sales training and development, uh, performance development. And um, the thing is, is that all three, I really love study of the brain. I love sales psychology. I love decision-making strategies and the psychology of that. Um, I really love all of that. And really those, all three of those areas utilize the same part of the brain. So um, that alone should tell you a lot about me. I'm a complete and utter <laughs> nerd. Um, I, anything that I can learn, absorb, grow, implement, that is my love zone. Um, and so that's just who I am. Um, but I was doing um, home interiors and corporate work and different things before I stumbled into real estate. Guys, I was an accidental investor. Um, I, I met a gentleman, married a man that loved real estate as a hobby and was spending thousands of dollars on coaching programs and products and midnight courses and all this yada yada and wasn't doing anything with it. I'm a little type A and OC. And I was like, hell no, you're not spending our money on all this stuff. You're not going to do something with it. <laughs> so I kind of really rolled up my sleeves um, and really put a, a, a lot more effort than he did and just kept with it all these years and uh, fell in love with it. How fascinating. So, so obviously your, your, your husband at the time, all the programs and the dollars and the courses, everything going out the window, that was essentially your introduction into real estate. But what really did you do when you got started? What, what was the path? What did you, what did you start doing? So, so you guys, I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, I jumped into the real estate market straight into hardcore short sales. And this was in 2000, 2001, which um, back then short sales were not, um, they weren't even well recognized by banks. You would call up a lender and you would say, I want to do a short sale. And they would say, huh? And we would actually uh, have the ability to walk the lender through the process. It was really, really, really powerful. So back in the shift of the 07, 08, 09 years, when there were lots of short sales to do, we had built up some pretty killer systems to be able to take on um, quite a volume at that time. So we actually had a lot of fun in that shift in the market, but um, that's what we primarily did. So we worked the pre-foreclosure niche. Okay. So um, mortgage lates, pre-foreclosure, foreclosure, we did dabble in buying at the courthouse too on that end of it. Um, and we stayed very heavy in there until we started adding on um, where we would hold the properties and we started doing a lot of lease options. Um, we loved working with tenant buyers and built programs that way. So 
um, creative deal structuring was something that we loved. I'm kind of a transaction engineer. Um, when you st- when you started doing when you started doing all this short sales and everything that you just kind of mentioned and transitioned to, were you a real estate agent or a broker at the time, or was this just something that you learned how to do and got good at before that? It was before that. So I started as an investor first. So investor hat first. Um, about halfway through my career, guys, I realized that there was a lot of money sitting on the table that we weren't getting because we weren't licensed. And um, I had been taught all along that you shouldn't get a license as, a, as an investor. And I was, I, I didn't, ever, I never understood that. I went the other route and it's really served me very well. So I, I got my license halfway in. Okay. Um, so how long have you had your, how long have you been a broker slash realtor? Um, I have been on the retail side now half of my career, which I think now is nine, 10 years. Incredible. Incredible. What, what would you say your current area of, with every, everything that you just said you did that first off, first off to jump in and, and learn how to do short sales from the beginning. Wow. That's, that's impressive right there. Whenever somebody asks me about a short sale, I'm like, well, they, they never, they never should have called it a short sale. They should have called it a long <laughs> sale. Yes. Cause there's nothing <laughs> short about a short sale. It's not, you know, if anybody knows the Dr. Seuss story called Horton hatches the egg, go look it up. Um, Cause to me, that's the short sale story right there. You just, uh, yeah, you sit and you sit and you sit and you sit. Um, but actually, there's something very beautiful about the process once you learn how to what, mm-hmm. what the system is that can be created around it. Correct, correct. What's your What's your area of focus right now? What are What are you working on in your business? Um. Wow. Really hard question to answer. <laughs> you're, you're like, what am I not working on? Yeah. We. So I. We. We. We have a lot going on. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm just going to be honest. If I were to put an umbrella at where I am in life now, um, I'm very much about, I'm in that space of giving back and growing others. And so that's my real passion at this level of where I'm at. Um, I, I like the whole idea of what learn, live, lead, right? So we learn a lot and then we have to, we live it. We start implementing it. We really get good at it. We hone it in. We live it. And then we have this calling, if you will, once you do that, to really guide and help others rise with the stuff that we've learned. And by the way, we learned some painful stuff too, not just good, right? Like we sure, learned a lot. Sure. Uh, so that's really, I really am. So all of the things that we do, honestly, are in that bucket, right? So a, a lot of growing of people, training, coaching, educating, growing agents up, growing investors up. Um, even on what we do at Reva Global, we're helping uh, companies become more efficient so they get their time freedom back, which is what we want as entrepreneurs, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so everything we do is in those buckets. Um, but I, I, we actively flip wholesale, actively take on retail clients. Um, those are all happening in our office. Some of the members of our office are actively doing developments, multifamily, um, so uh, short-term rentals. I mean, all of those niches are happening simultaneously within our group. Talk just a little bit about what your coaching or mentoring program looks like. So not necessarily in terms of like how you get them uh, into your program, but more like what you do with them from when they sign up. Okay. Um, very good question. So there's really three different buckets of coaching available with what we do. Um, and it's funny when you said, how do you get them in the funnel? I actually am one of those people who have never advertised myself really as a coach. Um, they just started in the last couple of months, actually, our team building out some things for me because they felt like it was necessary. Um, but I've always found that the best coaching clients were the ones that they were ready themselves. They came to me and said, I'm ready. And when I I, when they're ready, I have this philosophy of I'm ready when you're ready, right? So when they come to me like that, that's when that moment is right to work forward. And so we'll, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. You'll end up with the right person to take them to the, on the path where they want to go. Um, the three buckets that we offer, we have a, a community support type scenario where you can come into a coaching community, um, and just be a part of a community where you have support, question support. Um, there we do a coaching live training, group coaching live training every day. And depending on what program you're in, you may be in another in another one or two group coaching classes that are live and virtual and or sometimes in our office. We do have a campus um, in Roswell, Georgia, 6,000 square feet campus where we innovate, inspire and impact in that world. Um, but then we have continuity and tactical coaching. So it, some for some of you, like you may have just one thing, one nugget that you really want to improve on or a, a specific tactical goal you want to go after. So I'll give an example um, I have a client right now who he simply wanted to raise private money for his rehabs. 
He had never raised private capital before. He'd only ever used hard money or other types of institutional lending, but knew that private money was a possibility, but didn't know where to start. And that's all he needed to work on. The rest of his business is great. His mindset's fine. Everything's great. Um, and so we developed a plan to, for that specific goal. And then the other type of coaching that we do is what we call continuity coaching. And that's where we're going to ride together. We're going to go on a life path together for six straight months. And we're really going to build out um, your business. And we're going to start with your mindset, all of your resources, help you set a very attainable goal for a growth or scale point in your business. And then together, we're going to help you make the decisions that you need to make to get to the goal. Um, and that's a very custom plan type of coaching. Um, to me, that's the highest level coaching. And to me, some of the most effective um, for the right person, for the right fit. So, Would you say a majority of the people that, that look for you to mentor them in the investing type of arena, are most of them wanting to do flips, fix and flips? <laughs> <laughs> God love HGTV and right. uh, yeah, Chip and Joanna and all those wonderful people. Um, the, 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 the reality is that a lot of people do come to me with this goal. I want to go flip houses. I want to pick out tile and yada, yada, yada. Um, the reality is that generally what they want is not always what they're thinking they want. And so we do a very deep discovery process that includes both mindset um, discovery as well as really looking at resources, what they want their life to feel like, what they want it to be like next, what their ultimate lifestyle is. And then we, we roll back from that into how real estate can help them achieve that. And for some people, that might mean owning passive income property. For some, they should really just be a lender and not touch a rehab. Like it just, it really has to, they have to figure out first what they want. Sure. And then help them understand how, what that looks like in real estate. So, now, since you and I, since we've been talking here for this brief time and I've listened to everything that you do, when do you find time to sleep? <laughs> That's a funny question because I'm sorry, I'm just laughing. Today, honestly, guys, you're going to get a little vulnerability, a little rough, raw AV today. So um, Atlanta had a nice little hurricane roll through. Uh, a lot of people may have heard about it on the news. So I'm sitting in my car at a McDonald's because they have Wi-Fi. With nice. my phone flashlight shining in my eyeballs so I can talk to y'all. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been an insane day of trees down, no internet, no power. Um, and so somebody actually asked me that earlier and I was really thinking about my life <laughs> with virtual learning and everything else. Um, and I, I, it's not about that I don't get a lot of sleep. All right. It's about a constant, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a constant reassessment of where my energies are going and is it serving me, right? So I ask that question a lot. I encourage all of you to ask that question. You know, when you're going to go do something, ask yourself, um, how, what is this working for me? Is it working for you? Mm -hmm. Not about others, you first. Ask yourself, is this working for me? Um, and help allow yourself to make decisions to say yes and no to, 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 to things to make that work. Because you obviously have a, fam a home and family life as well too that you have to fit in every day as well. Children, I do. I do. I'm a, and I, and I only say this um, just because I want to inspire other people in this situation. But I am a true single parent. Um, I have been for 12 years for three children, and the two youngest were in diapers when this process started. So I have with no co-parent at all and no uh, family in the same city with me. Um, have managed to do a lot of this with kids. And so I share that because it's possible. You know, all things are possible. All things are possible. Always remind yourself of that. Um, and so because I work that way and believe that every challenge is working for me to teach me a way to do something better or more efficiently or to not do something at all, um, no is a, is a powerful yes for yourself. Um, I am able to do all that. So yes, I have three children. Um, we, are, we do not have a conventional lifestyle. Um, if they, if you were to ask them, <laughs> they, <laughs> um, they know everything about real estate. Um, they go where mom goes and, um, we make it work. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Now, and like you said, with all of that, what, um, and I don't know if secrets are the, are the right thing from what I wrote down my question here, but, I, but my question was when I read it, wrote it down was what are some of your own secrets to your success. And I don't know if maybe secrets is, is the right word because I know that that's kind of in the title of our topic tonight, but what are some of the things that attribute that you attribute to your success? Because you obviously have so many things going on. 
uh, with work and family? How do you, not necessarily how do you pull it all together, but what are some of the things that keep you motivated, that inspire you, that, that help you keep moving forward? Oh, wow. Um, oh, if that wasn't a mouthful, by the way, sorry. Yeah, no, I like that. It was a very good long hypnotic sentence to kind of have me in trance there for the minute. Um, <laughs> I, I will say <laughs> that, um, first of all, I want to say for everyone here that give yourselves grace. Um, success is a relative phrase. And for one person's measure of success and another's will be wildly different, right? So do, do give yourself grace and don't should yourself into what your success should be in relation to others. Okay. Should is an emotionally abusive word. It's one of the chapters in my book that we're working on because I, I want people to not put that pressure on themselves. So I would say that my first and foremost, not secret, but like something I do for myself is grace, right? Um, I, I don't expect, you know, perfection. I understand that things are going to go wrong. I allow success to be defined for me, what it is for me. Um, secondly, to everybody on this call, find, 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 find the right people and information to speak into your lives. What you allow to speak into your lives will direct where you end up in life. And this is so, so important. Be okay with changing your circle of influence with finding mentors, with going up and finding people who are where you want to go next. And it's okay if the people that don't want to go with you don't go. Like you just have to understand that's going to shift and change as you grow. Um, and I'm always seeking out, seeking out mentors and or colleagues that will challenge me, not placate me. I want to be inspired and challenged. If the people around you are not inspiring and challenging you, not the right people. Do you, have you, do you have your own mentor? You know, I have several, (laughs) Um, I have several and Hey guys, I hire coaches. Like I myself hire coaches for things I want to go do next. Um, For instance, you know, if any of you aren't athletes and you want to have a, you know, really improve your physical health, you should go hire a personal trainer. If you want to improve your financial health, you probably should go hire a financial advisor or coach, right? Like there are things you go seek out the person who's good at it. You, You hire your, your, you know, you hire your weaknesses, not your strengths. Right. So if somebody, if if it's a weakness, something you want to improve, go find somebody you can model excellence of and or hire them to help you. So, yes. You almost answered my next question, which was, what do you do to continue to grow both personally and professionally? Aside from you, you know, doing what you just said, hiring and coaches for other aspects of your life. What other things do you do? Um, I believe, um, well, I do a lot, but I'm, I, but I want to start with that. For all of you guys, I think um, from a, on a mindset side um, that I do for me that helps with growth, uh, I, I believe in journaling and meditation. I believe in spending time uh, really focused on my intention and using my own language and rhetoric to help me continually restate my intentions. Um, I think that that's a very that's a very powerful growth thing for all of you guys. Um, I don't know how how you like to read, but you know if you read or podcast, listen to podcasts, but be feeding yourself and with um, new information all the time. Stay curious, right? That's something you have to do to help keep yourself growing. And and yeah, mentors. I, I mean, I'm always seeking out. I just joined another accountability group. I'm really excited about. Like I. I anything I can do to put myself around good energy and good information. So. How do you, how do you deal with stru- the struggles that come up with your, in your business? <laughs> and boy, <laughs> we'll pay, right? <laughs> um, um, guys, there are alligators in the swamp and, and hurricanes that come through cities that are way away from the ocean, right? Like I mean, it, things, things will happen. Things will go wrong. It is the nature of stuff. You, you, as you learn, you mitigate more and more against things happening because you've learned, you've created, you've, you've had to develop the complexity to solve a problem at a certain level every time a problem happens. So as problems happen, you become better and better at, at correcting them. But I kind of, you know, I welcome them because I can't get better without the problem to solve. So I will say to all of you guys, as cliche as the sound, it so works. Every time something happens, literally just stop and say, okay, what is this doing for me? You know, when the guy steals your AC unit off your rehab, don't get upset. (laughs) It happens. (laughs) Ask yourself, okay, what is that doing for me? Okay, well, it's forcing me 
to learn other methods to secure my AC unit or other methods to learn when to drop the AC unit in the sale process so that I have a less likelihood of having it stolen, right? Like, And those are beautiful things that work for you so that in future projects, you can add that to your checklist, right? So allow everything to be something that works for you. That's that's the only way to handle problems or you'll drown. You'll allow yourself to drown too. So. What, what, are, what are some of the things that you see people who get into real estate and they're in the early stages and regardless of whether they're wanting to be a wholesaler or a private lender or, or whatever aspect they do, they want to get started. What do you see that are some of the things that, and I don't know if hold them back is the right way to put it, but where, where do you, where are you seeing new people struggle primarily? Mm. Oh, a couple areas. One especially what I call my cowboys or my one and dones, my, my hustler hobby, my hobbyists, my wholesaler hobbyers, right? Like they, it's a hobby sport. You know, they are going to go and just hustle for a deal and then they go blow the money on something and they hustle for another deal and they blow the money. Um, be, think like a business owner. This is not a hobby. It's a business. That's my number one thing I see a lot of people just not do. They don't reinvest what they get from the first couple transactions back into their business. Um, another uh, newbie thing is that, um, and I see this a lot. You're not, you don't develop your sales skills to be stronger and stronger. Your rapport building and communication skills when working with sellers and buyers so that you can increase the conversion of your sales. Um, thirdly is follow up guys. I see all my newbies not creating follow up systems. They'll spend thousands of dollars on their first, you know, mail campaign or whatever and not do any follow up on the leads and give up because they say it doesn't work. Um, yet there's probably gold sitting in the list. You just didn't follow up with it. Uh, we have a rule in our office that you follow up until it sells to someone else or you get a restraining order, right? <laughs> um, and that's just our rule. So it's literally written on the wall. Um, and so you want to to do that for yourselves. And I think the fourth thing is is mindset, right? I see so many newbies. They just have this like, well, I'm going to go. I see these guys on Facebook with these big checks. And I'm going to go do the big check and have the big car. And when that doesn't come fast enough, they just give up. And the reality is, you, it's, you're not going to get anywhere if that's your attitude. You got to be willing to stick with it. So, I know my 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 favorite pictures on Facebook are like, "Here's my watch. Here's my car. Which cool car should I drive today?" You know, my you know. Be, and a lot of times, guys, it's a car from Turo or it's some other guy, and they're like, "Hey, man, can I take a picture with your car?" And I don't mean to like throw anybody under the bus there. I know some real, real like, real players who really have the cars. But here's the deal, too. Guys, do this favor for yourself. When someone posts a check from a closing and they're like, yeah, I just, you know, $40,000 at the closing table. Listen, you have no idea if that's revenue. It could be income, but the expenses outweigh what's on that check. And they're actually at a net loss, not a profit. Learn what revenue is. Okay. Really, seriously. If you don't, you know, go study the cash flow quadrants, go study actual models of what income and the difference. Like a lot of times those guys, there's no profit there. So I laugh sometimes because I, you, you have no idea what that check really means when it comes down to their piano. Well, is there a book or a seminar or a course that you can think of that really inspired you or you felt like maybe helped take you to a different level or at least just really changed your mindset? Um, hmm. Well, I will tell you this. I, I, I read a lot. So I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but if you want to follow Friday Coffee Break Unfiltered, a lot of you, um, I have a podcast, sort of, we call it our anti-podcast podcast. It's on Friday mornings at 10. We go live um, on YouTube. You can follow us there and on Facebook. And um, we have a reading list um, that I put on there in the Friday Coffee Break uh, Unfiltered files. Go pull that reading list. Um, it's all of my favorite books. I probably have another 10 or 15 I probably should add to it that I've read in the last few months. Um, so um, I don't know if it's a, a single book, but I will say this. If you haven't read Think and Go Rich, you have to. If no you haven't read no. E-Myth, you must read E-Myth, right? Um, you must read Never Split the Difference. Um, I happen to love Chris Voss. He's a friend of mine. It's an amazing book. Um, it will be a game changer for those of you. Um, and then I think another game changer for a lot of you guys, if you've never explored the world of, of NLP or ever worked with a coach to do something called a breakthrough, um, 
So hit me up, ask me more details. I'll share with you what that means. Um, some of the most game changing things I've done through my career is do some really intense mindset work to help launch myself faster through my own limitations. Um, and that's been even more powerful than any book I've read. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I'm kind of nearing the end. I've just got maybe just like a handful more questions back. Cause like I say, I appreciate your time. I know you're hanging out at Mickey D's. You're going to probably get the Big Mac combo here when we roll out, but, uh, if I wasn't on a health plan, I might do that, but I've committed to our team. We're doing something called the power 90. And okay. one of the is that for 90 days, you can't have any fast food. So I have to sit here and stare at the golden arches, but I don't get to have any <laughs> mm, mm, good times. Um, and I know that you've touched on some of this throughout our talk tonight, but what are some maybe words of encouragement or tips or advice for the, the, either the new people that are getting started or the people that feel like they're stuck? Um, okay. So here's the thing. When you feel stuck, which is another phrase for anxiety, overwhelm and procrastination, and they all kind of, they're all in the same bucket. Oftentimes when you feel stuck, it's something internal. So I would say stop and do some internal work. Are you really doing what you want to do, right? Do you really believe it's possible? Ask yourself those questions. That's probably going to lead you out of stuck faster than it being some sort of tactical answer, okay? Um, as far as, you know, complete newbies, yeah, we've talked about this a few times. You've got to find mentors. Go find somebody that you can shadow provide value to in exchange for learning, right? Remember, it's always a value interchange. Don't just expect somebody for free to show you the ropes, okay? Um, but if you can go work for someone um, and hustle with them and, and, and provide value to them to learn, I think that'd be great. Um, find a mentor. Find somebody that you can learn from. Model excellence. I think that's one of the biggest struggles that I've, I see amongst new investors. And it was actually one of the things that kind of prompted me to start real estate wealth coaching. I had this vision, but I, it was, you know, five, six years ago, I was very, I'm still, you know, involved in our local real estate club. I'm sure you guys have one down there as well. Uh, but I would go to the monthly meetings and they would say, who's here for the first time tonight? And, you know, 15 some people stand up every single month but the because i was on the board of directors the club at the time was not growing I enough per month so what that was telling me is is that new people are coming in they're getting excited but they don't have any type of support system between this meeting and the next 30 days so um i, I completely agree with you having having mentors and coaches and networking with people that are at your level or above to, to help get you to the next level. I, I, you, you nailed it. I mean, that's so critical. Yeah. Give that gift to yourselves guys. I mean, you, you, seriously, if you really want to do this, <clears throat> that, that is the game changer. And I, I'll, you know, I still like Pat Precourt that I do the Friday coffee break with. I mean, yeah. I've been, I've been hanging with Pat now for what, 17 years, 18 years now. Um, you know, he's kind of my North star. He's still my mentor. <laughs> um, <laughs> My questions are a little harder now than they were 18 years ago, right? Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, find those people and find that so circles. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a constant thing. And masterminds, as you get a lot, those of you that are even more that are more advanced on the more advanced end, that's when we start joining masterminds. We join those for the same reason, mm -hmm. and we spend a lot of money. It's huge investments to be members of the masterminds. But I know I'm putting myself in a circle of people who are excelling at a high level, and that will inspire and challenge me as well. And one of my last questions before we kind of kind of get ready to close this out and do and open it up for questions is is um, a lot of and I understand when it, when when people naturally look at coaching or they hear mentoring and they find out that there's a, a dollar amount attached to that. Obviously, the first thing people look at is is you know number one, how much is it? And then the you know you cannot decide for that person whether it's too expensive or not, but. Um, would you talk just, and I know that you've, you know, being involved with the things that you have been over the years in your own program and things like that. How do you help people understand that it's okay to essentially pay for education or assistance? Oh, Amy, you there? Oh, it froze for a second. You were talking yeah. about costs and then it froze. Oh, okay. Well, what I was just saying is, is how do you help uh, people, whether they're new or or they've at some point in their career, how do you, how do you help people get past maybe the hurdle of 
it's okay to invest in themselves through either some type of coaching or mentoring program. Because a lot of people will look at the stuff and they'll say, like, for example, when you were in fortune builders and, you know, it's like, uh, how in the world were, were people getting someone to be like, hey, you're going to sign up for the mastery program. It's like twenty five to $40,000, but people do that. Well, they do. So here's the thing um, for all of you guys. You are not for, uh, let me, let's, let's, let's do a reframe. Let's work on, let's worry about vocabulary for a minute. <laughs> when you go and um, when you're thinking about coaching or any type of information, the reality is you're an investor and you need to look at whatever you're going to invest in as to what return it's going to give for you and how committed are you to the return period. And that goes with coaching too. It is not an expense or a cost. It is an investment. And are you ready to invest? You have, the reality is that not investing in yourself will not get you to the next place you want to go. You want to accept the fact that you will have to, in fact, make an investment in your education. And you're going to get it one way or another. It could be painful and take longer, or it could be more streamlined because you have someone helping you, right? As my, as my buddy Jack would say, who's on the call, you're either going to pay now or you're, you're going to pay one way. You're either going to pay now or you're going to pay later. Yeah, I mean, so Either way, you will pay. Either way you pay is right. So, you know, uh, the school of hard knocks, hard, of hard knocks still has a tuition payment. So I was talking to one and like there's, <laughs> you're still cutting that check. So, um, you know, be, pre- be prepared and seek out investing in yourself. I think if there's anything you guys have heard from me throughout this call, I've many times now in several questions you asked me, made it very clear that I'm out there investing in myself. I'm out there hiring coaches, seeking mentors, joining masterminds, reading materials, seeking out. I, I'm, I invest in myself. If I want to, to have optimum health, I go invest in a doctor to help me get there, right? Or a naturopath is what I work with. So whatever that is, you guys have to understand there will be an investment and be excited about that and the return that it will, it will make for you if you're committed to the results. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, before we get to the question and answer session, because that essentially was the last question that I had for you, um, for anybody who's on this call, how can they find you online? Should they want to, you know, talk to you offline or, or get involved in any of the programs that you've spoken about tonight? How can they find you? Absolutely. So I don't really love this uh, page that they're working on. They've been crafting this page mm-hmm. for me. Um, but you can, <laughs> it's like, it's good. It's not exactly what I want, but you can go to bepowerhouse.com. Um, there's four, four selections there that if you're interested in one of those, it'll pop up a little form with a calendar link and you can book a discovery session with our team. Um, you may or may not get me depending on which selection you choose um, to do that discovery call with you. Um, you can also go to thinkreva.com if you're interested in um, potentially getting a virtual assistant to start doing some outsourced work for, right? Um, you know, whether it's cold calling, skip tracing, property research, I, virtual assistants can literally do everything for you. 90% of your business can be handed off to virtual assistants. You were asking me earlier how I do all that I do. That's one key way I didn't mention that, but I have an army of virtual assistants who work for me. Um, it's unbelievable, right? And so I'm at this place in my life that whenever I think of something else I want to do or need to do, I never say how, I just say who, right? Exactly. I'm like, okay, who? Okay, well, Marianne can do that or Mark can do that. They're all VAs, right? So um, if you're thinking about trying to scale and do more, consider virtual assistants, go to thinkreva.com and that team. Over there, we'll do a strategy call with you to see how they can help you. So those those two ways um, will eventually lead you back to me, <laughs> um, <laughs> either one of those ways. So, so start there. Sure. And people can also follow you on Facebook too, correct? They follow me on Facebook. I do have a public figure page <clears throat> now. Over this last couple of months, they've been like creating things for me. Um, I can't accept any more friends. And we've gotten to a point where if I if I unfriend someone, I, I, I feel bad because I actually do know who they are. Yeah. Um, so. I'm like, that's crazy. 18 years though. And traveling all over the country speaking, I've met everyone on there. I'm like, I actually know who that person is, you know? Um, so, um, but you can follow my page, follow it because they have this really awesome plan for some amazing content um, that's going to be hitting that page consistently. You're going to love it. So follow it, especially those of you that love mindset, but also love real estate. You're going to get a little bit of both because that's really what I'm all about. So um, so love to please, please follow me. Um, if you send me a private message, understand it's probably my VA answering it, not me, but please go ahead and, and send me the message. We will get you what you need. 
So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, I truly appreciate your time. I tried to uh, keep our time here limited. I know you got a zillion other things to do, but um, before we close this down, does anybody who's on the call tonight, does anybody have any questions for Amy? Go ahead and chime in. Well, um, I, I had the,